first and foremost shows that no person is above the law, regardless of their status in society, regardless of their wealth, regardless of their fame. This case shows that no person is above the law. We're following breaking news this afternoon. The verdict is in. A federal jury finds Josh Duggar guilty of downloading and possessing child pornography. We have live team coverage of the verdict this afternoon. We begin with 5 News reporter Catherine Gilker with the details and what the defense had to say after the verdict came down. Catherine? The jury began deliberating at 8.30 this morning and came back with a guilty verdict at 10. They found Josh Duggar guilty of possessing and downloading child pornography, and then he was taken into custody. Here is Josh Duggar's latest mugshot as he was booked into the Washington County Jail earlier today. And here is a surveillance video from inside the jail as he was booked. Duggar could face up to 20 years in federal prison, and his sentencing will not be for another four months. Duggar's attorney, Justin Gelfand, had a very short statement as he left the courthouse. We very much appreciate the jury's lengthy deliberations. We respect the jury's verdict and we look forward to continuing this fight on appeal. We have no more comment at this time. And take a look at this video of Duggar's wife, Anna, Jim Bob and other family members walking out of the courthouse today. No one said anything. They just walked to an SUV and drove away. courtroom today there was response from the family Anna Duggar his wife did need buckle a little bit was teared up and was devastated by this the family was silent for the rest of the time and left the courtroom quietly now that's all I have thanks for joining us for this I'm live in Fayetteville covering news where you live Zoe Henry 5 News hello everybody welcome back to my channel I am Jen and this is Fundy Fridays and here on my channel I talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism usually doing my makeup but today I'm not doing that because it is a huge pain in the ass and as you'll see by the end of this video I already have enough um, pains in my asses about 19 of them that I'm dealing with right now so if you've been living under a rock um, and you don't know Josh Duggar was recently found guilty of possession of child sexual abuse images and he is awaiting sentencing right now but he is currently in jail and the Duggars entire world has just absolutely come crashing down it's on fire it's it's breaking apart I, I can't even like I never in my entire life thought any of these things would have happened and the shit I'm about to tell you that has happened in the last week alone is going to have you feeling like you're losing your mind. So here is your content warning. We are going to be talking about child sexual abuse images, um, many other disturbing things. It's the Duggars after all. So there's always a fucked up sexual twist to everything. So let's begin. And my sweater is from Hot Topic, by the way. I don't know if it's still up, but that's where I got it. Surprisingly, their plus size section is actually um, pretty good. So I did actually create a little journal while the trial was going on so that I could remember all of the details and it is um, <clears throat> 50 pages. So <laughs> let's go through it. The first day, it wasn't really technically the first day, but it was the first day that I started keeping my notes. Jim Bob and Bobby Holt testified, and the purpose of this day in court was to figure out if Josh Duggar's prior molestation allegations would be able to be brought up in this case. Was it relevant and why? Jim Bob testified, and he kept saying, oh, I don't remember, I don't recall. You know, how convenient for him because, as you remember, he was on the Megyn Kelly show with Michelle and Jill and Jessa trying to downplay everything. So, I don't know why he suddenly forgot. Although, I did see some commenters on Reddit making good points like... When an abusive person is doing something really heinous to somebody, they often don't even remember. You know, it's just another afternoon for them. So maybe he really doesn't, but I also think that he was just trying to get out of it. Bobby Holt testified, and she's the wife of Jim Holt. He was a representative in Arkansas, and he's a longtime friend of the Duggars. Um, church leader, they go way back. She ended up telling... Um, the truth about what had happened originally and 
it really confirmed a lot of the things that we thought was happening. And um, there's going to be a lot of this in this episode, but I just want to show you that people are not good or bad. They're not black or white. Everything is gray. Bobby Holt is a hardcore Republican. She posts a lot of things on Facebook that are very offensive to the people who watch this channel. She still did a very brave and good thing exposing the truth of what Josh did to these girls. And the same thing is going to go for Jill and Derek because they have done some really bigoted things very recently. You know, they're not LGBTQ allies but they have been speaking out against Jim Bob and Jill especially has been very brave in dealing with all this and, and deconstructing a little bit and going against her family very publicly. That doesn't mean that she's, you know, a shining beacon of uh, morality. It just shows that everybody's human and they're all going through something terrible. At the end of the day, it is Josh Duggar who is being crucified here, not the other Duggars, but... I will say, you know, it is okay to praise her for um, going against the family and, and being so brave and all that. But remember that her husband told everyone to vote for Roy Moore and he bullied a transgender minor. He did rip off a bunch of people raising money for his white savior mission trips. And I want to give another warning slash lecture to you all. Um, I did consider blurring the usernames and things like that in this next section but I talked to a few people and, and they mentioned that you know reddit is very public and it's not like um, people's usernames are their actual names like on Facebook or something but I will ask you that since I'm showing you this stuff do not brigade any of these people do not harass anybody do not do anything on the behalf of the Genonites do not do any like just can we please keep a well-controlled respectable and um, ethical community here. I might be preaching to the choir here. I know the Genonites know better. Just general warning because I have a lot of followers now. Don't harass anybody. Don't brigade. Don't dox. Just be nice and all that good stuff. Um, Duggar snark during the trial and especially right now is hot fire. Um, everybody's going there. I think there was uh, 45,000 people online during the trial. Um, they made the front page of Reddit. There was a Yahoo article about Duggar Snark. Yeah, it's, it's just been going wild. But um, a lot of the information that I got has been from there. So here is a little bit more about Bobby Holt's testimony. I'm going to not say any of the explicit stuff, but it is on the screen right now. So... Um, look away if you really, really, really don't want to see that. First to testify for the prosecution was Bobby Holt, whose husband Jim has known Jim Bob since the two were in the seventh grade. Bobby said their families were close for decades, attending Bible Grace Fellowship together for nearly 10 years and going on ski trips. We love them, she said, adding, we love Josh. He called her Aunt Bobby, she said. The Holt's oldest daughter dated Josh for several months in 2002 and 2003, though their relationship was chaperoned and more emotional than physical in keeping with the family's custom. They all hoped one day the two might marry. But Josh and the Holt's daughter instead stopped seeing each other on March 30th, 2003. She remembered the exact day because that's when she and Jim went to the Duggars' home after a call from Jim Bob, 56, to Jim Holt to learn what Josh had done. The Holts and the Duggars, Jim, Bob, Michelle, and Josh, gathered in the Duggar parents' bedroom for an hours-long session, Bobby said on the stand. Jim Bob paced around the floor and sometimes the group prayed. As Bobby recalled Josh telling her he had touched the four girls, she choked up. One specific incident had led to the meeting that March, Bobby said. Something happened earlier that day. Josh explained that Jane Doe, four, was sitting on his lap during Bible time and he touched her inappropriately. Then she talks about um, how he touched her, which is a different story than what Jim Bob had said on Megyn Kelly. It was a lot worse than what he had said. Josh also admitted to touching three other girls, Bobby said. In one instance, Bobby testified he allegedly inappropriately touched one of the girls in February 2002, and she went and told his parents what he had done, and he confessed. Bobby added that each of the girls was at least three years younger than Josh. There is speculation online of which specific daughter that was, and I 
think I know who it is too, and I don't want to expand on it, but if you think you know who it is, it's probably correct. As a pattern of behavior, she said, from when he told me, it started at age 12 until March 30th, 2003. Bobby grew more distraught later in her testimony, describing how in early 2005, between January and April, Josh had come to live with the Holtz in Little Rock. Jim, a state senator as well as an ordained minister, chaplain, and one of their church's elders, was regularly counseling Josh. The Holtz had offered to help Josh unburden himself of any temptations he wanted to confess. And so in one evening conversation with Jim and Bobby, that is what Josh did. According to Bobby, who testified that Josh shared more details about how he had touched Jane Doe 4 in 2003. Then she describes a little bit more about specifically what he did. He told me that his sister snitched on him, Bobby recalled. I went to go tell Jim, Bob, and Michelle, but they said they didn't want to hear it, Bobby said, later adding, people began to be aware. Something else happened in Little Rock that made Josh leave our home. She clarified that it was unrelated to inappropriate touching. Under cross-examination, Bobby said she had kept no records of what she said Josh told her, but pushed back when the defense focused on her failure to remember what word Josh used for genitals. I know what he told me, she said. Like Josh did previously, Bobby said during her testimony, I'm confessing now. Damn. And, oh, I didn't even know this about Jim Bob until I just, just now. Um, Josh, he insisted, had crossed some line right at the age of curiosity. At 14, your hormones are kicking in. Burn in hell, Jim Bob. And right here, Bobby Holton on Facebook, you have no idea how many times it has been taken to authorities. When I say they didn't do their job, I truly mean they didn't do their job. Did you know that there was going to be a trial for the abuse in 2007? Did you know that my husband and our daughter was subpoenaed for that trial? Did you know that the prosecution dropped it because my family was going to testify? Please stop spreading misinformation when you clearly don't know the truth. So day two was all about the jury selection and what was notable about that is that the judge had to dismiss one of the jurors because their daughter was married to a Duggar boy. So, um, and the, the judge was just as um, flabbergasted as you probably are because how could anybody possibly have missed that during the screening process? Jim Bob was trying to say, oh, what we told the Holtz was private. That's clergy privilege, even though in their religion, women are not allowed to hold clergy positions. So it's kind of like them trying to have their cake and eat it too. But luckily, Bobby roasted their asses and told the truth. A lot of these articles that I've copied and pasted from my journal are from um, KWNA or... Um, I know, the sun, um, but that's where it comes from. Josh Duggar's attorney submitted a supplemental briefing as well on Tuesday, claiming that Holt's testimony falls under clergy privilege, also referred to as priest penitent religious privilege. This would shield certain communications from disclosure. The brief states that Josh Duggar made these alleged statements to Holt with the expectation that they would be kept confidential. According to the prosecution's brief, Josh Duggar failed to adduce any credible evidence that he actually received priestly consolation and guidance from Holt or that he expected her not to reveal what he said. In these documents the judge is using to decide if Holt will testify, we have learned what the prosecution says Josh Duggar told her that day. Okay, day three was, it was the um, whodunit line. So the defense, um, Josh's lawyers, was trying to paint it as a classic whodunit. Gelfand began the defense's opening statement at, at approximately 10.02 a.m. He painted a very different picture of the events, telling the jury that if you like a good mystery, then this is the case for you. Why does it have to be Josh, he asked. He said, that's what investigators did was bury their heads in the sand over the course of 30 months. You're going to see some disturbing images, he admitted, but that's not about it. But it's not about that. It's a classic old-fashioned whodunit. And then he kind of like dunked on Josh to help him, I guess. Josh is a Mac guy, he added, then noted that no child sexual abuse images was found on his Apple brand personal devices. Gelfin went on to state that while Duggar is a great guy, he is not a computer genius. He detailed Duggar's homeschooling to the jury, noting that his client received a GED at age 16 with no further education after that. Yeah, but clearly he um, was very good at technology, as we're about to find out. Okay, there was also a recap about what had happened right when Josh got arrested. Asked, as soon as the cops showed up, has somebody been downloading child pornography? Yeah, dumbass. Why would you say that? So that definitely did not help. There was also a whole hullabaloo with uh, photos of his hands. And that was just, they were trying to find 
evidenced that he was at the car lot the time that the images were downloaded because they had a random photo of his hands on the phone and they could be like, see, you took that photo on May 13th, 2019, the same day you downloaded blah, blah, blah. A lot of people were worried that it meant that he was in the videos, but he wasn't. Day three, the other Duggars start popping off because, you know, attention's being drawn and they also start coming in person to the trial. Deanna Duggar, Amy Duggar's mom, uh, Jim Bob's sister, started posting this. I wanted to post this because there are people who are spreading rumors that Amy and I knew all about the situation with what is being shared. First of all, Amy and I were told a different story. We did not know. Also, if we had known, my daughter would never been allowed to be on their show. Second, I would have tried to step in and help some family. So sad. So horrendous. Third, some people are trying to bring up my past. I was a single mama for a long time. I'm proud of my daughter. Fourth, Amy did not ask to be on the show. A producer met her and liked her personality and spunk. That's how Amy got on the show. I just wanted to clear up some rumors being spread around. Thanks for all the prayers in this very difficult time. And yes, I am a sinner saved by his grace. Well, that's nice, Deanna. And it's just interesting because this they're starting to show that Jim Bob was in fact lying to everybody in his family. That was just something that we had suspected. We, by we, I mean the funny snark community. We had picked up on all these subtle things that were going on and it just shows that we were right. Jim Bob was lying to people. He was perpetuating a culture of abuse in his own family and he was actively hurting his daughters by doing this shit. And it's just, he is such an asshole. Let's, let's keep going. Okay, so Matthew Waller, David Waller's brother. David Waller is married to Priscilla Waller. Priscilla Waller is Anna Duggar's sister. They they used to be Anna Keller and Priscilla Keller, and they married, yeah. So that's how he's related. Matthew Waller was chosen to testify because he worked with Josh January through April of 2019. And it was very clear to everyone and the judge that he was being manipulated by the defense because he was very confused. One of Duggar's defense attorneys, Travis Story, then questioned Roberts about the password on the partitioned hard drive, asking if Intel 1988 rang a bell for him. Intel very faintly rings a bell, Waller replied. Roberts immediately got up to redirect, telling Waller in a raised voice, I told you I thought you were hiding something, didn't I? I asked you specifically if you were intending to testify to something that you were not telling me, Roberts added, indicating that Waller previously said he didn't know the password. Waller told Roberts the word Intel was vaguely familiar, very faintly familiar. If you know what I mean, he added, to which Roberts said, No, sir, I don't know what you mean. Defense attorney Story then got back up to ask Waller if he remembered the government asking him about the password before. It's hard to remember who are the government lawyers and who are the defense lawyers. I'm just starting to get it straight, he said. Story asked whether the defense simply instructed him to tell the truth on the stand and Waller said yes. Roberts redirected again, asking Waller if he was hiding his knowledge of the password, to which Waller said it was difficult to remember all the details of the case. When he repeated that the word intel was vaguely familiar, Roberts asked where he first heard that because the government never mentioned it in their questioning before the trial. Waller admitted that the defense was the one who brought it up, so Roberts asked if the defense had told him information he didn't otherwise remember. Waller replied yes. The heated back and forth continued, with Story getting up to ask Waller whether the defense gave him information outright or were simply asked questions during the pretrial prep. Waller said they only asked questions. When we asked if the password meant anything, it seemed to ring a bell, Story said, and Waller responded, a big bell. Roberts stood up for another round of questioning, though the judge told him at this point, Mr. Roberts, we can only beat this horse so many times. Noting that he only had one more question, Roberts repeated Waller's earlier testimony that he didn't remember the password to the main computer. Waller confirmed this and said he would use a sticky note Duggar posted on the computer in order to remember it. Roberts finally asked whether he had heard Duggar mention the other password, Intel 1988, around the office, to which Waller said he didn't recall. They were very clearly trying to manipulate him and get the story they wanted, and he didn't even know the difference between the types of lawyers, and uh, yeah, this was... They were trying to throw him under the bus, and this this is extremely fucked up. On his way down to hell, Josh Duggar is pulling everybody with him and it's just, it's just really, um, it's getting old. Also the same day, the VP of Covenant Eyes testified to explain what the program was and how it worked. And the best part of this whole day is that Justin Duggar, when he came out of the courtroom, he was given a big old thumbs up 
And it was super weird and super inappropriate, especially that day of the trial. A couple other brother-in-laws came, Derek and Austin. Amy Duggar was roasting their ass again. Also, you don't smile with your thumbs up leaving in a situation like this. Where's the respect? Like, go off. <laughs> then Amy was kind of having a back and forth with um, Laura DeMaisi and somebody replied to a post that Amy had made and they said, everything you say does not have to be a passive aggressive dog and others. And then Laura said, amen. In a direct reply to DeMaisi, Amy responded, I will speak the truth and inform everyone of how IBLP is harmful and destructive. Although she tagged herself in the next reply, Amy seemingly then responded to DeMaisi again and wrote, Also, girl, you might want to be careful who you work for. Okay. We also found out that Josh was visiting Reddit and Hollywood gossip. So we're like, oh my God, what if he knows about us? I hope he does. Hillary Spivey, which is Justin Duggar's mother-in-law who people in the funny snark community make fun of her because she is seemingly obsessed with Justin and it's kind of true. Like, of course she's coming to defend him. Um, This is a screenshot from TikTok. This is not a Duggar TikToker. So that's where I got the screenshot from. That's why her face is in there. Um, and Hillary had to say this about Justin's little thumbs up photo. Thanks for all you friends and family for understanding the difficulty of this situation. Due to helping out in other ways, I was not able to be there with Anna as much as I wanted to. I don't think any of us, not even myself, can understand what she's going through. I would like to ask for all of you to remember her in your prayers during this time. Don't forget she also has a newborn that she's caring for as well. She has done an amazing job through this trial and could sure use our prayers. And as far as Justin goes... If folks only knew him, they would never make the negative comments that they have. He doesn't have an unkind slash mean bone in his body. He saw the cameras up ahead and commented to me that he was going to look positive so that there would be no negativity documented. His heart was so right, but surely people understand that with the media, you can never win. Once again, thank you for all who pray for Anna, as well as the extended family. They sure need it, and they greatly appreciate it. <laughs> Here is the best part of the video. So let me take a drink. If this trial is a classic whodunit, then this is a classic smoking gun, okay? Here is the absolute proof that they had that Josh was downloading this stuff. This little chart um, I did steal from Reddit. So if you made this, thank you very, very much for every single time that Josh downloaded these images. He also sent a text to Anna saying like, I'm going to be late or whatever. I can't come home. That's how we have absolute proof that he did it because he was so stupid and short-sighted and thought that he could get away with whatever he wanted. He had dominion over all the women in his life and he was getting off to what he could get away with. And this sick son of a bitch was also a very stupid criminal. So he fucking texted his wife and made a paper trail every time he downloaded this sadistic shit. And as you can see, he did it over several days and, and this lovely Redditor made this chart that's very handy. My notes say day six, but this says day four, but I was keeping the journal the day that they started the jury selection. So. This guy, um, Clint Branham, he was like acquaintances with Josh and Josh was asking him um, how to set up a partition, how to um, get past filtration systems. This Clint guy that Josh was like, asking all these suspicious questions to um, just did an AMA on Duggar Snark. I have known Josh for around 20 years now. My first memory of him is at a campaign event for Jim Holt in 2001 or so. He was running the sound system and at the time I was developing an interest in media. When asked to describe my relationship with him in court, I said I would consider him a close acquaintance. By that I mean we had each other's phone numbers, but I was not invited to his wedding. My family briefly attended the Duggar's home church in 2006, right before the split. We left IBLP before ever attending the church and fully left fundamentalism a few years ago. The conversation the prosecution was interested in took place in 2010, either right at the end or immediately after the Jim Holt U.S. Senate campaign I helped run. Josh and I were sitting around in a coffee shop discussing technology, as was normal. Jim Holt was there as well. At the time, I was digging into internet proxies and was working on implementing a transparent network-wide internet filter. Think like you have at work in a corporate environment. 
My family had stopped using Covenant Eyes earlier because of issues we had found with it. As a part of the conversation, I was explaining to Josh why I thought he needed to consider a better filtration system than Covenant Eyes, and as an example, I mentioned an alternate operating system that could be used to bypass it, aka a partition. The specific example I gave was Windows-based. Either he or Jim asked if it could be done with Mac OS as well. I was not sure. We then discussed Linux as another option. I described his response as disinterested, to the point where when I sent an email to some friends talking about what I had learned and how to set things up, I distinctly remember leaving him off the email. I haven't really spoken to him since then. I saw him at weddings, I texted him after the Ashley Madison stuff to see how things were going for him, and I randomly ran into him and John David at the Whataburger in Springdale sometime around then. Although it has been years, we were never really close friends and this has still rocked my world. I was surprised by how much this affected me emotionally ever since I first learned about the charges. December 8th was the closing arguments and we all thought that we were gonna get the verdict that day and it didn't happen. They went home and it was uh, early Thursday morning that we got the guilty verdict. Um, as you can see, everybody was being uh, vague yet sassy that day. There's this famous picture of Jill and Derek coming to court and I thought it was really cute that Jill had a homemade necklace made by either one of her sons, Israel or Samuel, and it said Jill and it was just like, oh, she's keeping her kids close to her heart um, in this trial where it's all about uh, how the Duggar parents let everybody down and threw their daughters under the bus to protect their piece of shit son. Oh yeah, and then Josh hugged Jill, which mm, he's lucky that was in court because Derek should have slapped him. After hearing testimony from 12 witnesses, the jury in the courtroom of Judge Timothy L. Brooks in the Western District of Arkansas Federal Courthouse in Fayetteville, Arkansas, returned a guilty verdict after Josh Duggar's six-day trial. Duggar was found guilty on both charges he faced, receipt of child pornography and possession of child pornography. That's the legal name of that charge. That's not what you're supposed to say because it's impossible to make pornography of children. That's rape. The judge issued a stay of conviction on possession as a lesser included offense. At a press conference after court adjourned, prosecutor Dustin Roberts explained the procedure. By function of law, you cannot be convicted of both. So that's why he didn't get separate charges for receiving and downloading and possessing because those are all the same thing. Ben was super weird. He also, around this time, he released this video that's like homophobic and it's from his church and he took the comments off, but he released it during the trial. Struggle with bisexual feelings, but I don't act on them. How do I balance this with Christianity? And the Bible is not silent on that. And Owen, I know you have written a book on our desires. What, what would you, what, how would you answer a question like this? Read the room, yeah, Ben. I would start with a text like 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, which teaches that in the Corinthian church, there are a lot of people who once not only committed sexual sin, but identified themselves by their sin. And yet, Paul says, that's what some of you used to be. Everybody had the same type of generic statement. They feel bad for the victims of child abuse and they're praying for Anna's family, which they are Anna's family, but I digress. Ginger and Jeremy were the only ones who called him out by name. As we are processing this week's events, several thoughts have come to mind that we feel are important to share. We are saddened for the victims of horrific child abuse. We are also saddened for Josh's family, his wife, and precious children. We are saddened for the dishonor this has brought upon Christ's name. Josh claims to be a Christian. When a professing follower of Jesus is exposed, a hypocrite, the response of many will be to challenge the integrity of Jesus himself. They'll question the legitimacy of a savior whose so-called followers private delight in the sins they publicly denounce. This is why the Apostle Paul told religious hypocrites that the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. For Josh, we fear for his soul. Yet amidst our sadness, there is gratitude. We are grateful that God is a God of justice who cares for the innocent and helpless. And of all the people in this world, he especially loves children who are among the most vulnerable. This reality makes the existence of sex trafficking and child abuse one of the most horrific evils imaginable. It is an evil God hates. Jesus welcomed and and cared for children, seeing their helplessness as an opportunity to protect, not exploit. And his harshest indictment was reserved for those who caused them to stumble. It would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. For those who follow him, he requires the same compassion towards children. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. 
For I tell you that in heaven their angels will always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. The Apostle James put this care at the heart of true religion. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. We are thankful to God for exposing Josh's actions and to a legal system committed to protecting the innocent and punishing the guilty in this case. We are praying for further justice, vindication, protection, and healing for those who have been wronged. In a move that nobody saw coming. Jana got charged with child endangerment. And the rumors at the time were that she either fell asleep and some kids wandered off, or maybe it was a seatbelt offense. Um, a lot of people were saying, oh, maybe she took the M kids to go see Josh, but that would be impossible because he was on such a high lockdown that they would have known and somebody would have been arrested. While that was going on, Amy put this on Instagram. I'm home with little man. We have jumped on the trampoline, built huge towers with blocks, read books, and now a little lunch. One thing I won't be doing is falling asleep. And then she posted this right after. I will call out what is right and I will call out what is wrong. This couldn't have been intentional. Thank God the child was okay and found. I bet you were exhausted, stressed, and just emotionally worn out. Watching multiple kids is hard because there's so many of them and you only have two eyes. It's a very sad situation going on and my heart goes out to Jana Duggar. Love you. I said, damn, bitch. <laughs> And just yesterday, Jana put out a statement um, that explains what exactly had happened. I'm only sharing this because the media has been having a field day with it all. I prefer a more private life, but I know that my last name means that everything we do is open to public criticism and interest, especially during this time. The raw facts. I was babysitting a few months ago and one of the children wandered outside alone. A passerby who saw the child called the police. This resulted in a written citation as well as a follow-up with child welfare who concluded that it was an accident and the child was unharmed. They recognized it as a case of child slipping out of the house when you turn your back for a moment. It all happened so quickly and it was scary. I am grateful for law enforcement and those who protect and serve our community. I was certainly never arrested like some may have implied. In the end, I was just upset at myself that it had happened at all, but so thankful it all ended safely and that's truly what mattered the most to me. And then Jessa also made a statement about that statement. Getting messages about headlines about Jana. Bottom line, it was an innocent mistake. She was babysitting and one of the kids slipped out of the door unnoticed, but it ended safely. Could have happened to anyone. This media is sensationalizing this because of other current family circumstances and it makes me so mad. She's without a question one of the most amazing women I know and I'd trust her with my kids any day of the week. Do me a favor, give the girl a break and all you perfect humans go back to living your lives. So meanwhile, Derek has been causing all kinds of, um, drama on online um, accusing Jim Bob of being manipulative and abusive, which he is, and just making some weird vague statements. And like, it feels like he doesn't quite know what he believes, but today was difficult for our family. Our hearts go out to the victims of child abuse or any other kind of exploitation. We are thankful for the hard work of law enforcement, including investigators, forensic analysis, prosecutors, and all others involved who save kids and hold accountable those responsible for their abuse. The pair expressed the feeling that they have been lied to so much that we wanted to hear the evidence for ourselves in court. After seeing all of the evidence as it was presented, we believe that the jury reached a just verdict today, consistent with the truth behind a reasonable doubt. Josh's actions have rippled far beyond the epicenter of the offense itself. Children have scars, but his family is also suffering the fallout of his actions. This trial has felt more like a funeral than anything else. Josh's family has a long road ahead. We stand with them, we are praying for them, and we will seek to support them however we can during this dark time. And then Ben starts being real cringe, talking about rudeness is not the antidote to an extreme political correctness. Blah, blah, blah. Dude, you're... <sighs> Shut up. Derek is talking about, it's sad that this isn't an isolated incident. I used to have much respect for Jim Bob as my father-in-law, and I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt for years. Unfortunately, it's only become clearer to us over time just how deep this man's manipulation and deceit will go for his own gain at the expense of others. He has lied to my wife and I numerous times. Contrary to his campaign, he does not believe in freedom, but his manipulation has resulted in what is akin to human trafficking. When confronted privately, he is not humble, but he is defensive and verbally abusive. 
When he says he cannot be bought, the truth is that he has a history of being a sellout to anything that he can personally profit from, and he will justify it however he wants to continue his personal agenda. Again, if he has lied and continues to lie to the best friends and his own family, he will lie to you. Joanna made a statement as well. For this last year, as you can imagine, there has been a lot of unanswered questions in our minds regarding Josh. We were able to sit through the trial to hear the evidence for ourselves. We agree with the judicial system's verdict, and we are thankful for the men and women who work tirelessly to protect children and, pre and help prevent child sexual abuse material. Our hearts break for all CSAM victims. We are praying for Anna and her children. Well, what about Jim Bob and his campaign, you ask? That was um, just the earlier this week. Well, let's just say that um, the Holtz are definitely no longer friends with the Duggars because the shit that they said is, ooh, that'll burn some bridges. Today is a very important special election for the residents of Springdale. There are four candidates in the Republican primary. Of these four, I am fairly good acquaintances with two of them and Jim Bob Duggar was my best friend. Was. I have not had dealings with Colby Fulfer which is the one that Derek endorsed, by the way. However, I have friends and people I know working on this campaign. The same is true for Steve Unger and can be said for Edge Nolan. It is very important that you get out and vote today. Mrs. Bobby and I will not make any endorsements in this race. As always, it's important for you to call the candidate and vet them hard. Not only that they will vote the right way, but will they push an individual responsibility agenda? Freedom! Or will they continue to lean towards the government being our nanny? I can say this and it hurts me to say, Jim Bob Duggar lied to me about the truth of his son when asking to court our daughter. It was clear he perjured himself on the witness stand at the evidentiary hearing on November 29th, 2021. He said that Mrs. Bobby was a past elder at our church in the time frame of 2003 to 2006. Up until November 2006, the church never had women elders, ever. Jim Bob was always conservative in many areas when I served with him from 2001 to 2002. The problem I have is, if he lied to his best friend and he lied under oath, will he lie to you? Judge wisely, put feet to your prayers, sincerely, Jim Holt. So after Jim Bob's son was found guilty of possessing the worst um, files of of child sexual abuse images that prosecution had ever seen, Jim Bob lost <laughs> the race uh, quite badly too. Yeah, that's, uh, those aren't, those aren't, uh, that's not very many votes. <laughs> Fuck you, Jim Bob. I'm glad you lost. I hope you never run again, you stupid asshole. The craziest thing, in my opinion, that has happened this fucking week um, besides Jana Duggar being cited for fucking child endangerment, is that one of the Duggars' former bodyguards did an AMA. <sighs> and he revealed quite a few things that are crazy, like, um, one of the kids needed a visit to the ER, and rather than go to the hospital down the road, Jim Bob had John David fly the kid to Texas to see a family friend. A bunch of storms were moving through the area. CPS had already visited the house, and Josh was worried about another visit. Jim Bob was also worried about paparazzi. And this next thing I'm about to show you is even crazier. Um, so apparently, one time the bodyguard was traveling in another car um, with the whole Duggar caravan, and they drove up next to Josh's car and he was watching porn on his phone while fucking driving. This dude is a psychopath and I would not be surprised if he's done or will do more violent and disgusting things before he's before he's dead. So the bodyguard says, here is a juicy one. I'm glad this was asked. Josh kept his phone on a hands-free stuck to his windshield. There was more than one occasion where I saw him watching porn on his phone while driving. I was in a follow car and he, and he either didn't know or didn't care. Or my theory, he gets off on exposing other people to this kind of stuff and he just wants to see as far as he can take it because that's what it's about for him. It's about control and it's about his disgusting desires. Are there any surreal moments that stand out to you, especially from when you first started working with the Duggars? My first meeting with the family was ridiculously surreal for me. They were holed up on a ranch in Jay, Oklahoma, and the place had a summer camp vibe to it. Everyone kept insisting that Josh's behavior had been dealt with and everything was just fine. Nobody had dealt with anything and Josh was introduced to me by a laughing Jim Bob as the man of the hour. And finally, um, some good wholesome news to wrap this whole thing up. Um, so Duggar snark, they did raise a bunch of money for the um, 
Children's Safety Center in Northwest Arkansas. And here is a bunch of packages and care boxes that they sent for the kids. Sorry, it's actually the Children's Safety Center of Washington County and they raised over $21,000. Holy shit. Yeah, this is awesome. This is why I am so proud of how far the snark community has come because it really used to be a bunch of people just making fun of the Duggars and, and being kind of mean. And now it's a legitimate resource for deconstructors and people who are cult survivors and, and who um, need somebody to talk to and understand them. And it's just, it's a fantastic community. Um, most of the time it's um, very um, feminist and um, leftist and really understanding and welcoming and just a, just a fantastic community. And I can't believe you guys took this horrible, awful blight on society, this Josh Duggar case, and turned it into helping children in that area. I can't believe it. I am so, I'm so proud of you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I wasn't planning on making it. This is just, um, a, I mean, honestly, how could I not make a video? The amount of shit that the Duggars and the Duggar hanger-ons have done this week, um, it was impossible. Not to mention fucking Bethy from Girl Defined is acting crazy again. And um, apparently Timmy Rodriguez fell asleep at the wheel and got into a car wreck several months ago. And Jill didn't report on it except um, she's talking about her fucking knee that she sprained. And uh, these fundies are crazy right now. I can't. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, originally, I was planning on doing a 12 Days of Christmas parody called the 12 Days of Kirkmas. Um, and I filmed a bunch of stuff for it. And I did watch 12 Kirk Cameron movies and they were all very terrible due to timing and um, copyright claims already. I wanted, I did a prototype video of one of the movies and it got blocked worldwide. So I don't really see the point of putting in up to 40 hours of work editing these 12 movies if they're all going to be blocked. So I will be doing an episode about Kirk Cameron and Candace Cameron next year, probably in January. And um, I will talk about all the stuff that I watched and everything I learned and all the controversies and scandals surrounding the Cameron family. And of course, we're going to make fun of him because he's, he's a fucking loser. So that's what you can look forward to next year. Yes, and James will be on the channel full time and we're going to both make videos. I'm very, very excited about that. I do have some uh, awesome, awesome projects coming up next year that I can't wait to tell you guys about and some collabs with some people that you've been asking me to collab with and what else oh um my hair I forgot to talk about it I was trying to dye it purple but it looks way more blue but I really like it I think I look like a like a awesome cotton candy fever dream I hope you are all having a um wonderful holiday season I hope you're being safe staying warm and being kind to each other I'm not putting out a video next week. So, um, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Festivus, Yule, and all that good stuff. I love you very much, and I will see you next year. You've been fantastic, and I love you so much. Bye-bye.